Will here. Continuing on talking about uh, fuel injecting my air-cooled Volkswagen. Uh, my wife has a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle convertible that we've turned into a Baja and just been doing a little bit of a series on how I built that engine to accommodate the Speed Uno fuel injection. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I was able to make the idle stepper motor, idle air bypass or IAC um, work with this system. So I thought I would um, kind of do a little bit of a demonstration on how the stepper motor idle works and what some of the settings are with the GM four wire um, idle air control solenoid and how that works with the uh, NO2C board and the stepper control on the board. So to jump right into it, I made a couple little visual aids here to kind of show how this motor works. So right here we have the four wire um, GM stepper motor um, and this plunger moves in and out to close off a port inside. So normally on the GM, this would thread right into the throttle body. Um, I machined a adapter to fit this housing that has a fitting that goes over into the intake of the engine and then is just vented to atmosphere on the outside. Ideally, you take another fitting and run back to the inlet air track in, so that it's getting filtered air, so nothing's getting in there. Um, like I said, this is a four wire um, uh, stepper motor. And what we're doing with that is, um, to give you an idea, the inside of this valve, there's a threaded rod and a motor on the backside. And the motor, instead of just spinning, it makes steps. It, when you apply power to one field, it steps one direction. Apply power to the other field, it steps the other direction. And as that motor makes these steps, that threaded rod on this plunger moves the plunger in and out. So when the engine's cold and we have a cold startup, we need this valve to back open a little bit. It backs off and lets some air by to raise that idle speed to um, make the engine um, idle better and, and warm up. It's kind of like the fast idle screw on an old um, carburetor with a choke. So what we have to understand about how this valve works is there's a maximum number of steps for how far this plunger can travel. And we're driving with, let's say we've had the engine running for a little while and we, we go in and we shut the key off. This valve could be in this position. The ECU doesn't know what position this is in when we start it back up. It has no feedback to be able to know where it was at. So the way that we start out with this system to know where the valve is, we have what's called home steps. And home steps is how far we're gonna drive this valve to make sure that it's closed. So what'll happen is when we first turn the key on, it'll drive this valve all the way until it stops. And we need to tell it that we, we want that, the number of steps it tries to drive it to to always be larger than whatever it might have moved. So in my example, I have 150 steps uh, for home steps. So it tries to drive 150 steps. If it only moves 50 steps and then hits the physical stop, the solenoids will keep powering it, trying to drive it, but it's what's called missed steps or skipped steps. And it'll try all 150 and then it'll just stop. And when it stops trying, that valve is going to be closed. And then from there, when we go to set our position, if we need to back it out, say 10 steps, it'll know it'll send 10 steps and that'll be that position. And as long as we don't hit a physical stop again after our home steps, we'll always know the position of that valve by what we drive it to. So if we move over into our software, just to kind of show you where these settings are, we'll open up Tuner Studio and I'm gonna open an example project to show you where these settings are. So from here, we go up to startup and idle, and we wanna select idle control. So in the very top of this menu, we have 
idle control type. We're going to click that drop down. We have many options. Um, none for no idle control. On and off would be if we just had a solenoid that we wanted to open for like a fast idle. PWM, open and close, those are for a pulse width modulated type valve. Um, that's different from what we're talking today. Stepper motor, open loop, and closed loop. Stepper, open loop is what we're going to talk about today. That's, that's what I'm going to focus on, what I've been able to get working fairly well. So that's what I'm going to select. Um, the next option in this menu is the crank to run taper in seconds. So in another set of tables, you have cranking settings versus running settings. And the cranking settings, let's say we might have this valve opened um, all the way to let it have lots of air so that it can get a lot of charge to get it started. Then there's going to be a taper from whatever that position is to your run position. I have it set to 20 seconds right now. That's going to be completely up to you in your application. Then the next thing we want to jump down here to is some of the settings for this particular valve. So the settings that I have found online, step time, this valve requires three milliseconds to make a step. If we tried to send a pulse any shorter than that, it might skip a step. I've chosen to be on the safe side and drive it at four milliseconds. Um, that, that just gives it a little bit more time to make sure that we don't have any skip steps. And then the next choice between that, or after that, is cool down time or cool time. And so every time this valve makes a step, there needs to be a pause before the next step so that it, it knows to make the next step. And so with this particular valve, it's very fast. Um, one millisecond is all that this needs between steps. You could add, you could say make that two or three just to ensure you don't have skip steps, but um, the literature that I've been able to find on, find on this valve is one step, one millisecond is fine. Now, this is where we get into some of these settings that I've kind of had to figure out on my own. Home steps, um, as I discussed earlier, home steps is going to be when you first turn this on, this valve is going to drive itself in to some particular point. Well, it's going to try to drive until it's closed. And we need to make sure that we have a number in there that's always going to drive that valve closed. We don't want to go too high. I don't want to put 500 in there for home steps or anything that would, that would just take too long to get there and be doing a, a whole lot of nothing. Um, but what I've been using is 150 steps. That ensures that it goes all the way closed and makes sure that we have a home position for that valve. The next setting that we have is minimum steps. And this is the minimum steps that this valve will make between movements when we send it in the software. So in my opinion, or what I'm finding is that it may have a lot to do with some of the closed loop tuning, because one step is such a small movement of this valve that by moving one step, we're not really making any changes. And if we have our closed loop set up to try and do one or two steps at a time, it's too slow to react. So I have it set to one step. I'm using open loop, and I want to be able to finally control exactly what positions I want this valve to go to. But if you were trying to get closed loop working, that could be a setting that you play with to help try to smooth out some of the hunting in closed loop. Um, the next option we have is do not exceed steps. And essentially, that is the number of steps that you can open this valve and still make changes to engine RPM on the engine. From my um, settings with this particular valve, after about 60 steps, this valve doesn't make any changes to engine RPM. So I have my do not exceed steps set to 70. So if, if Even if I was to try and drive this to 75 or 80 steps, the engine RPMs wouldn't go up anymore. That's the extent of what this valve is able to control. So I leave it set to 70. The last um, setting we have in here is the stepper inverted. And 
depending on how you have the wiring connected to the four pins here, when the valve, when the ECU is trying to tell the valve to close, it can run in or out. And so if, when you tell it to home steps, and if the valve was to pull back towards and open all the way instead of closing, you can just change this stepper inverted. The other way that you could tell to do this is when we get the engine running, we can go into another chart and I can show you kind of where you could test to see whether your valve is working the correct direction or not. So that's our basic valve settings. That's, that's what we have to have as a baseline to get this valve working. Now we're going to go into some of the tables to show how this works. So idle stepper motor will open up a graph that will show you how the motor is set up. So in my application, this, this chart shows the motor step position on the left and motor coolant temperature across the bottom. So at 11 degrees Fahrenheit, I have this position set to um, about 50 steps. And then as you can see, it's the same up through about 50 degrees. Then as we get to 80 or 90 degrees, it steps down closer to 30 steps. As we get to 120 degrees, it's at about 16 steps. And when we get to 150 degrees, approximately, the stepper motor is down to zero and closed. And this curve allows that engine to warm up. So when it's cold, it has a, the, the stepper motor is open quite a bit, and allows that engine to have a lot more air. And then as the engine warms up, it gradually steps that motor down closed further. Now what you can do while you're connected to the car to see if your valve settings were correct and um, make sure everything's working, while this is connected and running, you'll see um, a dot on this line at approximately where the engine is. So let's say we had it started and running and it was 164 degrees. We could grab this dot and move it. And so if the engine's sitting here and it's idling at, say, 900 RPMs, and I grab this dot and I move it up from zero steps to 30 steps and click burn, if the engine RPMs go up, that valve is working in the right direction because as that valve stepped out and made more steps, it would raise the engine RPM. If this engine was sitting here and running and I move that up and the engine RPMs went down, we would need to go back to the idle control settings and change this stepper inverted to yes. So now, essentially, for tuning this, it's just starting the car and making these adjustments as it warms up to get the idle that you need. You know, start it up on a cold morning. If it doesn't have enough engine RPM, you just keep bringing these settings up higher until it's got enough air. And then if, as it warms up, let's say, you know, it's 50 degrees, 48 degrees here. And as I started up, it's running 1,000, 1,100 RPMs, but it gets to 80 degrees and now it's running too fast. It's running at 12 or 12 and a half, 12, five. You could grab the, the reading here and drag it down. And that'll have that valve closed. So you would just drag this down to meet the RPMs that you're looking for at that point. And then just keep watching that as the engine warms up, that line will track and you can adjust this line to meet what your engine needs. Now the other option that we have is idle stepper motor cranking. And very similar, it's got 
the stepper motor position on the left side and it has coolant temperature across the bottom. And so very similarly here, this is gonna be the position that that valve is in while cranking at those temperatures. Now, I generally have it open a lot more. You can see here on this chart that 24, 20, 30 steps is the, the most closed that I have ever during cranking because I wanna make sure that it gets plenty of air while we're, while we're cranking. So, um, but very similarly, you can adjust these to any different position while the engine is cold to help get that starter. So those are really the two main options for the stepper motor settings.